Hello class, today we are going over lesson 1.10, Operations in Scientific Notation. We got a quick little note section for us here. All we're going to be learning how to do is multiply, divide, add, and subtract in scientific notation. So you might be wondering to yourself right now, if you didn't do your 1.9 notes, what is scientific notation? Well, scientific notation is just a simpler way to write things. So for example, if we have very large or very small numbers, take 1,482,652, for example. If I want to rewrite this in simple terms, I can round it using scientific notation here. So we'll move our decimal place over until we get to a number that is between 1 and 9. So for example, this number is between 1 and 9 here. We wouldn't want to stop right here because if we make our decimal place right here, then we would have the number 14 and 14 is not in between 1 and 9. All right, so what we have to do now is we have to rewrite this here. We are going to rewrite it with the first three digits, or 1.48 times the amount, times 10 to the power of the amount of times we moved here. So we moved over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times. So this would be 1.48 times 10 to the 6. So this is very similar to how we did in chapter 1.8 or lesson 1.8, where we're using um, uh, powers of 10 to estimate our numbers. However, the only difference here is this time we are not rounding. We're just keeping the first three digits. Okay, so operations in scientific notation. Let's start with how to multiply. So when we multiply, we are going to use the commutative and associative properties to rearrange this here. So take, for example... 8.2 times 10 to the second times 4.3 times 10 to the first. This started off as a problem, 8.2 times 10 to the second times 43. However, they rewrote 43 as 4.3 times 10 to the first. Okay, so to multiply these, what we have to do is we have to group together our numbers here, the first terms, the 8.2 and the 4.3. We're going to group those together over here. And then we are also going to group together our exponential terms or the powers of 10. So we have 10 squared and 10 to the first. So what I say by group together is I mean we are going to use the commutative property. Remember, the commutative property tells us we can rearrange addition and multiplication in any order we want. And the associative property, which again tells us we can put parentheses around whatever we want. So we're going to take our terms here and we are going to combine them over here. We're going to do 8.2 times 4.3. And then we are going to take our powers of 10 and we're going to combine them over here. We're going to do 10 squared times 10 to the first. And again, we are able to do that because of our commutative and associative properties. Now what you have to do is just multiply. So you have to do 8.2 times 4.3. That's going to give you 35.26. And then 10 squared times 10 to the first. We can use our product of powers property to simply add the exponents there. We're going to do 10 to the 2 plus 1. And then you simply have 35.26 times 10 to the third. Remember, you want your first number to be less than 10, so we're going to have to move our decimal place over one more time here. And since we're moving our decimal point one time to the left, we need to change our exponent from 3 to 4. Okay, so let's do that with an example here. So we want to write, or actually let's go back to this here. What I really want you guys to write here is I want you to write step 1. Rearrange. And step two, I want you to write multiply. We need to include a step three here if you need to think about it. Simplify, as in make sure you are simplify. Make sure you are still in scientific notation, i.e. Um, your first number is between one and nine. Okay, so down here, let's get an example. We have 5.4 times 10 to the fifth times 7.2 times 10 to the third. Okay, so we need to rearrange it here. We need to put all of our whole numbers here or our um, constants on one side and all of our exponential ones, our powers of 10 on another side. So our constant, or our, yeah, our constants, let's rearrange over here. Let's get 5.4, oops, that shouldn't be there, times 7.2. We'll put that in parentheses over here. And then this is going to be multiplied by our exponential powers, which are 10 to the fifth times 10 third, 10 to the third, or 10 cubed. So we have 10 to the fifth times 10 to the third. Again, we just simply rearranged it there. 
Now you got to go to your calculator here and multiply these two numbers together. So if we do 5.4 times 7.2, we are going to get 38.88. So right here in blue, we're going to have 38.88. And this is going to be multiplied by 10 to the fifth times 10 to the third. Remember, we can add those exponents together since we are multiplying two numbers with the same base. So we have 10 to the five plus three or 10 to the eighth. All right, now we just have to ask ourselves, is this first number here between um, one and 10? It is not, 38 is not in between one and 10. So I have to move my decimal place one spot over here. And we are going to change this to 3.888 times well, this was 10 to the 8th, but we moved it one more decimal place over to the left. So it's going to become 10 to the 9th. All right, so that's how we multiply there. Again, our step 1 is going to be rearrange. Step 2 is going to be multiply. Step 3 is going to be simplify. It's a three-step process there. Okay, now for division, it's very similar here, except we are going to use our quotient of power properties instead of our product of power properties. So what we have to do in this one is, again, we have to rearrange. So that way we are dividing our constant terms by our constant terms and our exponential terms by our exponential terms. So in this problem, we have 1.83 times 10 to the 6 divided by 3.0 times 10 to the 1st. So we have to first rearrange this here. So we get 1.83 divided by 3.0 times 10 to the 6 divided by 10 to the 1st. So then we just have to simply do 1.83 divided by 3.0, 1.83 divided by... 3.0 is going to give us 0 0.61. And then 10 to the 6 divided by 10 to the 1st. Remember, we have our quotient of power properties. We have two numbers with the same base. So that means we just need to subtract the exponents. So 6 minus 1 is 5. So we get 0 0.61 times 10 to the 5th. Notice how this number right here is not in between 1 and 9. So we have to move our decimal place one spot to the right here. So it's moving our decimal place to the right our exponent needs to shrink by one. So we get 6.1 times 10 to the fourth. So again, if you're writing down your steps on this one, step one, rearrange. Step two, divide. And step three, simplify. It is basically the exact same as what you did with the multiplying. However, the difference here is we're dividing, not multiplying. So step two is divide, not multiply. All righty, everybody. Last one here. We need to learn. Oh, no, we need an example. Sorry. All right. So we need to do 6.25 times 10 to the eighth divided by 6.2, or excuse me, 2.5 times 10 to the six. All right. So in blue, I'm going to, oops, that's not blue. In blue, I'm going to have my constant terms here. So I'm going to have 6.5, 6.25 and 2.5. So we're going to write that over here. We have 6.25 divided by 2.5. And we're going to be on the other side here. We're still going to have a multiply in between this time. But we have in green, or let's do red here. We have 10 to the eighth divided by 10 to the six. All right, so first thing we need to do is 6.25 divided by 2.5. You need to go to your trusty calculator there. When you do, you're going to find out that 6.25 divided by 2.5 is equal to 2.5. That's still going to be multiplying here. Now we need to use our quotient, or excuse me, our, yeah, our quotient of powers property since we have two numbers with the same base here and they both have exponents. 10 to the 8th divided by 10 to the 6. That's the same as 10 to the 8th minus 10 to the 6 or 10 squared. Now, for our last step, we need to simplify here. So if this number is not in between 1 and 9, then we need to change it here. Look at that. It is in between 1 and 9. 2 is between 1 and 9. So we could just stop right there. We get 2.5 times 10 squared. Again, so our step 1, rearrange. Step 2, divide. Step 3, simplify. We didn't have to do step 3 here because it was already simplified. Okay, so the last operation we're going to need to learn here is how to add and subtract. Adding and subtracting is, depending on how you look at it, it's either the really easy one or the really hard one. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to take your numbers and write them out fully. So we have 5.97 times 10 to the 24th, which means you have 597. And then you need to move your decimal place starting here at 24 spots to the left. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, whatever. You guys can count that. There should be 22 zeros there. And then 7.35 times 10 to the 22nd. 
Again, you're going to just rewrite that as an expanded form here. So it's going to be 735 followed by 20 zeros. Then you just have to simply subtract these numbers here. So you're going to have to line them up zero by zero and then subtract going up and down. This is the only way I want you guys to learn about this here. There is another way to do it. However, it's pretty confusing. So I want you guys to just think about adding and subtracting. You rewrite them in their expanded form. So step one, rewrite. Oops. Step two, add or subtract. And step three, you're going to rewrite again. As in, you're going to put it back into scientific notation. All righty, so let's come down here. So for an example today, we have 5.11 times 10 to the fifth minus 8.2 times 10 to the third. So let's first rewrite our 5.11 times 10 to the fifth. I have this 11, this 5.11 here, meaning times 10 to the fifth, meaning I need to move my decimal five times. So one, two, three, four, five. We're just going to fill in zeros behind that. So I have 511 followed by three zeros, or 511,000. From that, we are going to be subtracting 8.2 times 10 to the third. Again, we need to move our decimal one, two, three spots over. So we get 8,200. Now we just simply have to subtract here. So 511,000, or excuse me, yeah, 511,000 minus 8,200. Zero minus zero is zero. Zero minus zero is zero. Zero minus two we can't do, so we have to borrow. This is going to become a zero here. This becomes 10. 10 minus two is eight. Now again, we have eight, zero minus eight, which we can't do, so we have to borrow. This is going to become 10. 10 minus eight is two. And lastly, we have zero minus zero again, and then five minus zero, which is five. So you get 502,800. Yep. All right, now we simply have to rewrite this back in um, our scientific notation. So we need to move our decimal one, two, three, four, five spots to the left. So we're going to have 5.028 times 10 to the fifth, since we moved five decimal places. All right, guys, I don't need to see you writing a conclusion on this one here. I do want to make sure you have all the steps done if you are not doing this in us with, together with us. Um, so make sure you go back to the video here and get all the steps, whether it's um, rearrange, multiply, simplify, rearrange, divide, simplify, or expand, add or subtract, simplify. All righty, everybody. Hope this was helpful to you guys. If you have any questions, please bring them to me tomorrow. I will see you all in class. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. Peace out.